Welcome to today's episode of African Biographics. In this episode, we profile Francisco Macias Nguema from the Equatorial Guinea, who is arguably one of the worst and most brutal dictators any African nation has ever seen. He makes Idi Amin and Jean Bidobo Kassa look like amateurs when it comes to brutality and the destruction of economies. Macias Nguema was the first president of independent Equatorial Guinea, a country that was a Spanish colony. Under Macias Nguema's dictatorship, tens of thousands of citizens were forced to flee in fear of persecution as well as to protect their personal safety. About one third of the population was either exiled or murdered by his government. He only left office after he was deposed by his nephew, Teodoro Nguema Basong, in 1979. In this video, we take a look at some of the atrocities and bizarre policies of Francisco Macias Nguema. If you're new to this channel, don't be shy to press the subscription button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss out on any new uploads that come out every Monday and Friday. Francisco Macias Nguema was born in 1924 in Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea had been the only Spanish colony in Sub-Saharan Africa and was made up of two parts, Rio Muni on the mainland of Africa and Fernando Po, a volcanic island of the Cameroonian coast. It is said that when he was 9 years old, Francisco Marcias witnessed his father being beaten to death by a Spanish colonial officer. On the day after his father's murder, his grieving mother, in despair, committed suicide. It is possible that the cruel events in his early childhood shaped his personality and gave him his willpower and his instinctive taste for violence and brutality. Marcias Nguema would go on to fail the civil service exam three times. This would be one of the reasons why he developed an inferiority complex that turned to a hatred of intellectuals. He later rose to the position of mayor of his hometown Mongomo under the Spanish colonial government and later served as a member of the territorial parliament. In 1964, he was named the Deputy Prime Minister of the Autonomous Transition Government. In the late 1960s, Spain came under much pressure to relinquish its sole colony in Sub-Saharan Africa. In the first and only true democratic election in Equatorial Guinea, Francisco Marcias Nguema, an obscure civil servant with a talent for saying what his audience wanted to hear, positioned himself as a leading nationalist and defeated a better qualified candidate who was advocating for maintaining links with Spain. The man whom he beat was Bonifacio Ondo Edu. Ondo Edu briefly went into exile in Gabon and was officially reported to have committed suicide on the 5th of March 1969. Although it is reported that Edu was actually executed soon after his return on trumped up charges of having been planning a coup against Francisco Marshes. As early as 1969, Marshal Nguema unleashed a campaign to persecute his political opponents who were arrested with their goods being looted and extorted. A fierce political repression was implemented. There was a militia by the name of Youth on the March with Marshals, which was responsible for numerous atrocities including massacre of civilian population, torture, looting and burning of villages. His thugs killed Nigerian immigrant workers in the cocoa plantations who demanded higher wages and his thugs also badly beat up members of Nigeria's diplomatic mission in the capital, Malabo. On the 7th of May 1971, Marshal Nguema issued a decree which repealed parts of the 1968 constitution and granted him all powers of government and other institutions including powers formerly held by the legislative and judiciary branches as well as the cabinet of ministers. That same year, he passed a law that imposed the death penalty as punishment for threatening the president or the government. Insulting or offending the president or his cabinet was punishable by 30 years in prison. In 1972, a presidential decree merged all existing political parties into his party, the United National Party, with Marshal Nguema as the president for life of both the nation and the party. He also acted as the chief judge who sentenced thousands to death. The government and the economy became a family affair, with most of the ministers coming from the same village. His nephew, Teodoro, was appointed as the head of the National Guard. Masha Nguema declared himself the Grand Master of Science, Education and Culture and launched a purge against intellectuals. He claimed that the educated classes were polluting the climate with foreign culture. He killed or exiled nearly all the educated people in the country and banned the use of the word intellectual. He declared private education subversive and banned it. Before long, he had killed everyone who wore spectacles, a sure sign in his peculiar opinion of superior educational accomplishment. His persecution against intellectuals drained the educated class out of the country. 
Under Marshall's Nguema, one particularly infamous incident of mass murder occurred on Christmas Eve of 1969 when 150 political prisoners were lined up and shot in the stadium by security forces wearing Santa Claus costumes while the loudspeakers played the Mary Hopkins song, Those Were the Days, My Friend. In the same setting, 36 others were told to dig a ditch in which they were subsequently buried up to their necks and left to be eaten by red ants. As his jealousy and paranoia grew, he ordered the execution of all former lovers of his mistresses as well as the husbands of the women he coveted. On the economic front, Equatorial Guinea had neither a developmental plan nor an accounting system for public funds. Marshall Nguema killed the governor of the central bank and carried whatever remained in the national treasury to his rural village house. His behavior became increasingly erratic as his rule progressed, and he used his knowledge of traditional witchcraft to bolster his legitimacy and terrify the population into submission. He had fishing boats burned and roads mined to prevent escape. The economy ground to a halt and 90% of the public services, including electricity, power, mail and transport came to a standstill. The cocoa and fishing industries that had sustained the economy ceased. He banned Western medicine, claiming it to be an African. Francisco Marcias Nguema was eventually deposed on the 3rd of August 1979 by his nephew Teodoro Nguema Basong in what was described as a case of execute lest thou be executed. Teodoro, the head of the National Guard, was compelled to take that step because of an earlier incident in 1979. Six members of the National Guard had gone to Guema in Mongomo to ask for money to pay the men and the officers of the National Guard who had not been paid for some time. According to the Telegraph, the six men were executed after this meeting, forcing Teodoro to stage a coup as a form of defense and seized power in 1979. Marcia Nguema, who was arrested in his home village, would eventually be tried and executed on September 29, 1979. The total number of deaths attributed to the Marshall's regime during its 11-year reign generally ranges from 20,000 to 50,000. During the Special Military Tribunal, Marshall was initially indicted for 80,000 murders, although he was later found guilty for 500. The figure of 80,000 corresponds to the estimates of murders cited by exiles who were interviewed in Madrid after Marshall's fall. Other sources have placed the number as high as 100,000, approximately one-third of the country's population. Some observers have said that Marshall Nguema may have been a psychopath, a disorder potentially enabled in part by reported childhood psychological trauma and that his behavior could have been affected by other possible mental illnesses as well as his reported periodic use of large quantities of cannabis. But one thing for sure is that Francisco Marshall's rule was a very dark chapter in the history of Equatorial Guinea. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are on Francisco Marshall's rule. Remember to like and share the video if you enjoyed it. This has been Tatenda for African Biographics. Until next time, cheers. Have a good one.